So the first thing we'll need to do is create a Bitbucket repository. Although we clone the initial repository from GitHub, we'll have to create a repository here and then transfer the origin URL of the repository to the created repository here in Bitbucket. So if you don't have a Bitbucket account, you can create one now, they're free. And then once you have your dashboard overview page, you can go to create, we'll go to repository. And I'm gonna take the same name as the one from GitHub. And we create it. So we have our URL. Note that it will be different based on your username. And we wanna copy everything, but not including the git clone part of the command. We just want the URL. So we can check the current URL of the repository we just cloned with git remote dash V. And we see that GitHub URL. We're going to update it with our Bitbucket URL that was just created. That is You can check that it works by issuing the same git remote command. So now that our remote is set, we can finally create our pipeline file. And that file has to be named bitbucketpipelines.yml. As far as I know, a pipeline file always begins with the command pipelines. And then you define branches. As we'll see in further lessons in the course, it's helpful to have different pipelines based on which branch you're on. For example, you may have a testing or staging environment, and then you have your live or production environment, and the pipeline will have to be run differently based on those branches. So if some of you dug into the repository, you may have noticed that I already named the initial branch that we cloned lesson one. And you can verify that by running git branch sv. And you can see we're on lesson one. So in our pipeline file, we want to note that with lesson one. Now we can add what is known as a step. And we can add a name for our step. and a script. Now in pipelines, bash is always available to you. So for now, we'll just do a simple echo, hello world, save that file. We'll add everything. Git commit with a message, just a test pipeline. And we'll push that. Great. On the site's repository, if you go to the pipelines tab and you scroll down, because it was the first time we pushed a Bitbucket pipelines YAML file, we have this sort of view. In our case, we've configured it correctly. And so Bitbucket's telling us the configuration looks good and we can fire it off here. If you've missed a command or an indentation, it might look something like this. It says it's invalid, and you'll have a yellow dot where you can hover. So here it says bad indentation, but sometimes it can say unknown command or something's unrecognized. Really, 99% of the time, it's because of indentation. And actually, there's a really nice tool that you can validate if you're really stumped. You can continually copy and paste your pipelines file into here until it says it's invalid. So if we fix this, just to show as an example, valid. And again, these are invalid. So you can fool around here with your pipeline 
until it's valid, then you can always copy that and paste it into here. All right, so let's enable pipelines. And right away, our very first build is firing off. Great, so it was successful. The really nice thing with pipelines is that you get a log of each step that occurred. These are built in, the setup and teardown. However, we see that this is our custom command. We have both the actual command in the pipeline and the result of that command. So we'll see how this is helpful later in debugging when there are errors in the pipeline or something goes wrong on the server. So in this lesson, we created our first pipeline file with just a simple echo. We initialize that through the pipelines tab. We saw the logging events and we also saw how you can validate your Bitbucket pipelines with this Bitbucket pipelines validator, which I'll post in the lesson notes. Now that our pipeline is hooked up to Bitbucket, we can start building more complex examples and we'll move into that in the next lesson.